What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another War Guide. This is the series where I share various tips to help you guys either attack or defend on a particular war map. In today's episode, we're going to be covering how to attack effectively on Operation Griffin. Keep in mind with this series, it's primarily focused on what you can do as a solo player in order to get past certain sections and help your team out. This isn't about team strategies, but there are definitely areas where teamwork is an absolute necessity. So first up, when I'm attacking, the opening route that I love using on this is first off, coming up over towards a B flag. Check to make sure nobody's building there. If they are, pick them off, no problem. Make sure as you wrap around here, you want to be looking for the guy that's building this hedgehog over here by A. There's almost always somebody that seems to go straight for that one. And it's almost always just going to be a quick free kill for you if you wrap around like this and go for that. Just be aware of the people that might come up to this position here. It's pretty straightforward as far as that goes though. You just want to pick those guys off. This particular section, I don't have a lot of great tips for you guys. I got a couple lines of sight, but in all honesty, this is going to be primarily just a team effort and you just got to push your way through. The key with this is pushing for map control first so that you can get the tank second. What I mean by map control, just in case you guys are new around here, is push up and get to a position where you can basically spawn trap the enemy, like get them pushed back to the point where they can't even get a line of sight on your tank. So let's just say I have teammates already trying to escort B, I want to come way ahead of them and destroy this hedgehog first, assuming this was built. Before the tank even gets here, I want to be able to do that. I want to be slaying enemies around here. I want to be picking people off. Of course, somebody does have to be on the tank, and if nobody's doing it, then you might as well. But I feel like map control is the most important factor with this. Now, one great line of sight I have for you guys for the A flag here. This is more for snipers, and it's more for when you're coming off spawn. If you have guys set up right there, which is very, very common, you'll have either a sniper or somebody set up on that machine gun. Excellent line of sight all the way back here from spawn. This works very, very well it is right there. You can actually see the box right through there. You can easily pick those people off. And uh, this actually helps your team a bunch. Normally, I wouldn't recommend like hanging back and sniping, especially on offense. But if your teammates are really working hard to get the A1 done and those guys are just really locking that down, that line of sight is excellent for clearing those guys off. Now this particular wall right here, a lot of people think this is more so for the defenders. I feel like building this wall is more advantageous for attackers. So if you're attacking and you get the opportunity to build this wall, I feel like you should go for it. Reason being is let's just say we're escorting C and obviously we'd already have it probably escorted pretty far up there if that wall, if we're up to where the wall is. Uh, that makes it so the people that are over towards the B-bomb or the B-tank, they can't get to you unless they wrap all the way around there or if they wrap all the way around towards your spawn, which is highly unlikely. So this means as you're escorting C, now I only have to worry about people that come around that corner, people that come up there, and people that may come over there, even though that's very rare that you'll get people to come in that area there. So really, it's just two positions I have to worry about now, and I don't have to worry so much about my flank. So this is more so for attackers than defenders. Just keep that one in mind. Now, oftentimes with the C tank, a lot of times you want to wrap around here, even if no one's escorting, even if you get the C tank like moved up and nobody's escorting. If you come up here, you can actually see towards the trenches there, often pick up really free kills there, and then you can kind of lock this way down, and then your teammates can come and escort that tank. Uh, that assumes that somebody is helping you out on the tank. Another thing I wanted to point out for the B tank, even if you don't have the, T the C tank pushed up, if your enemies or if your teammates are struggling to get that B tank, that last little push here, Oftentimes, I like to push up around C here, obviously make sure that's safe, and wrap around towards trenches. You can keep this locked down, and you can kill anybody, shoot them in the back here, and this really helps your teammates out as they're pushing that B tank, that last little bit. So this is definitely a power position that shouldn't be taken for granted. You can even push right up in this area here, and they often won't expect you if they're coming through there. And I don't find that enemies come through this particular area too often. So you can usually sit here and just kind of pick people off in the back. And this helps so, so much when your teammates are pushing B. Honestly, aside from that, with this section, it's just going to take teamwork and brute force. You just have to win your gunfights. You got to push up and you got to get those tanks moving. All right, guys, so moving on to this next section. This is where we have to get the fuel and take it to our tank that'll be parked over there. First up, just a little line of sight for a sniper rifle as you're coming off a of spawn or a really accurate rifle. Right there. You can actually see somebody, if they happen to be right in that spot, I'll just show you exactly where that is over here. Uh, that can sometimes work just as you're coming out of spawn as a check spot. Sometimes you'll get guys that are there. They'll build like half a wall here. And this is the particular spot. If they're sitting right here, they can actually pick you off right through that area there. 
Now, another little spot to challenge those people that are on that wall, because that's often where they really lock the A flag down from. They'll build that half wall up and then they'll just sit behind there. And it can be pretty difficult to take them out of those positions sometimes. One thing I really like to do is if I have a sniper rifle, if I come back right here, from this spot, I can actually jump and see them. You gotta get a little closer to the tree, but there you go. You can actually get a little jump shot on those guys. You might be able to pick them off and help your team out. Oftentimes it's great to run the rifleman classes on this one. So you have a rifle or an SMG class as well as a sniper rifle because there are some cheeky little lines of sight like that one. So this next line of sight I have for you guys is if the enemies have this wall built and you're attacking towards A, just a couple things you can do before you attack A. First up, a little jump shot spot here on that barrel. Oftentimes enemies will sit behind that barrel. If you see them there, you can actually just spray through these boxes here. I believe you lose a lot less bullet damage shooting through these than you do shooting through this wall. You can also just shoot through the wall, especially with FMJ. I do this with LMGs all the time. You can just spray through there, but I feel like shooting through these boxes is much, much better. Also, this will kind of work towards those guys that are on that half wall. You kind of have to guess at this point, but if you spray through with an LMG with FMJ, that can work really well. You can even do it back from these barrels here. Just spray through there. If you get a hit marker, keep spraying and hopefully you'll get that kill. Now, something I've mentioned in a lot of my other videos when talking about war is if you plant those bombs, you can actually shoot them to make them blow up immediately just to be a little bit faster and maybe take your enemies off guard. Now, once you take this A area here, a lot of times I like to push right up to this wall and pick people off as they come around that corner. They almost never expect it. They'll come around that corner full sprint, not ready for a gunfight. You'll take them off every single time. This is kind of assuming that you also have teammates that are here with you trying to take the fuel and get out of there. It's more of a support role that you can play by pushing up like that and then uh, just kind of locking it down for them. Now, one thing I want to point out in this fuel section here is when you actually get the fuel, I'm currently carrying it right now. Let's just say this wall got built. Maybe I snuck in through middle and this wall is still built. If I pick the fuel up, I can just toss it over the wall. Then my teammates can easily take it over to the tank and they'll have like no challengers whatsoever. This can be also used in situations where you know you're going to go down any second. You're not going to be able to make it. Let's just say I pick it up. I know somebody's coming around there. I'll just whip it as far as I can before I go down. This can be used as sort of a last ditch effort to get that pushed up to a more safe position for your team. Now getting over to the B fuel site, one thing that I like to do here is I like to throw my nades and tacticals through this area right here, but not until after I planted this bomb. So first up, I will plant this bomb on this wall. Right after I do that, I'm going to be whipping my nades in here. Just as those nades are exploding, I rush this and they're dealing with either my stun or my nade. I've at least forced them out of cover. Assuming they were standing right here, they now have to move. They have to do something. They're not ready for me or they're not as ready for me. And it just helps me attack those guys much more effectively. So that's one little tip that I have for you with that. Uh, let's just reset this here. Another thing I wanted to point out is a lot of the times I, I don't see people taking advantage of this. These walls are almost always going to be built at B. And normally I prefer going for A. If these B walls are built, that essentially means this area is cut off for you as an attacker as well. So I will often use this route to attack the A site instead of the B site because I know I'm safe from there. I might have to worry about some people that are set up here or in here. But once I get to this position, I can clear off this entire A site here. And usually these guys aren't paying attention to this direction. They're more so focused on the guys coming through that wall over there. So this is an excellent support position for your teammates, especially if those walls are built because you don't have to worry about getting flanked through there. You just have to worry about people coming through this area here. Another thing I wanted to point out, when you have the bomb in your hand, if you guys are going to be getting into a fight and you don't want your machine pistol, if you hit triangle or your swap weapon button, you simply drop it at your feet and pull up your real gun. All right, so moving on to the next sections here. So the way this works, if you look under the mini map, there are several sections to this. These are like little checkpoints. As you hit these checkpoints, it moves the spawns for both you as well as your enemies. So you want to keep hitting these checkpoints. Also, once you hit a checkpoint, it, your tank will no longer back off. So right now, if I don't touch my tank, it'll back all the way back off to 0%. But if I get it up to, I believe it's 17% for this first section, then it will only ever back off to 17%. Our spawns move up, the enemy spawns move back. And this first section, there's really not much to say. That's why I just wanted to talk about that kind of stuff. There's no like excellent, excellent lines of sight or anything like that for that area. But for this second section right here, if you're having a hard time with this second section, which can happen if you get really good enemies, sometimes I like to build this wall halfway up, mantle up on it, and look at that. Excellent line of sight covering that entire area right there. You can easily pick people up through there and just kind of support your teammates as they're escorting the tank. 
It's not like the only position. I wouldn't just stand there and linger there all game, but picking the couple people off from there can definitely help out your team. Another really neat thing I want to point out with the tanks here, this is actually really fun to do, is if you go prone in front of the tank on any one of these stages, it just pushes you along and you can often take your enemies off guard and shoot them. They usually don't expect to see you there. Obviously you've got no cover. It's more of like a gimmicky for fun sort of thing, but I just love doing that. Alright, so this next section, this is one of the most difficult sections to escort the tank. This is often where teams will get stopped or at least slowed down very significantly. Getting it around this corner to the next checkpoint, which you have to get the tank to right about that area there on the road, it can be very, very difficult. It's a crazy clash point in this corner because you have enemies coming from there, you got people sitting up there, you got people setting up at these barrels. What I like to do if we're really struggling, it takes a little longer, but come all the way around behind these barrels here. This is one of the best positions you can get into to start clearing those enemies off. You can get a line of sight towards the snipers there, and you can get a line of sight to the people there and then push up to this area. Basically, what you want to do is take control of this area right here. You want to get behind this little half wall. Got to worry about people coming through there. But if you can lay down here, pay attention to those people, crouch, pick these guys off. It's really just going to be a battle at this point, and you got to push through. But oftentimes, I don't see enough people wrapping towards this right side and picking people off through there. They, they come head on a little too often, and it's a little too easy to lock them down if they're all just pushing it head on. Now, one of the reasons I was saying that you want to get behind this wall here and go prone is you can actually escort from behind this wall. So if you can get up to this position, I don't know if you can make it all the way up to the checkpoint, but you can definitely at least keep it contested from this position here. And oftentimes they don't expect that. You'll be avoiding a lot of the nade damage because usually they're throwing the nades right behind the tank. And that works quite well. Once you get this up to 42%, You've now hit the checkpoint, which brings your spawns up further, and it pushes their spawns back all the way onto the bridge there, which is great. Once you've reached that checkpoint, you're kind of set for the next section, which is excellent. In this next section, the thing that I do every single time is I get across here as fast as possible. It's a bit risky to jump across. Once you get across to this position, there's almost always somebody set up right there. Never challenge them from the barrel. Instead, the best way to challenge them, I do this every single time I play this map. I come up right here and he's a free kill every time. I, I don't think I've ever lost this gunfight against the guy on that turret. Super, super easy to take him out from there. And then from this position here, it's just easy. You push up to this barrel, you can take control of this area right here, and from here, you can easily pick those guys off. This section is usually not a difficult section by any means to get through. Also, if you're coming from this side of the map over here, and there's a guy on the gun, the best way to challenge him, instead of coming up to the sandbags where he expects you, is simply like, Stick a little bit further back here, and there you go. As you strafe around the corner, nice clear line of sight on him. All right, getting up to the next section here, a couple great things you can do. A lot of people still haven't realized that from this position here, you can mantle up. You get a great line of sight over there and over there. But what some people also don't know is you can mantle up on this part of the sandbags as well, which just gives you a bit of an alternative of a line of sight. This actually gets you a line of sight right in towards their spawn. You can also look over top of the tank like this, and this can be very effective as you're pushing up and trying to pick off a few kills. Also, it's at this stage where this bottom area opens up for you. So you can drop down here, and you can flank the guys that might be camping right in this area here, kill them real easy. And it's usually also pretty easy to get this next section done as well. The last two sections are pretty straightforward. Just get your kills and get it pushed up. You can even flank all the way around to this point at this area now. And you can pick people off from behind. They usually don't expect it. Sometimes you'll get like one or two guys that end up pushing this side. And you'll just have to battle it out with them. Now getting into the final section. This area can be pretty difficult because there's a huge clash point right when you get past this barrel here. And also, they, they often get themselves on that machine gun right there. And that can be a bit tricky to deal with sometimes. Because if you come to this barrel, they're just going to melt you instantly. If you come around any other way, they've got it locked down. Unless you know about this line of sight, then those guys are actually just a free kill every time. If you just come to this area right here, you kind of walk yourself up. There you go. Easy line of sight. That guy is now a free kill for you every single time. Now the key to getting this tank pushed up through this last section is you have to have at least somebody pushing this side that's capable of getting some kills. You want to be killing people here, your teammates will hopefully be pushing up and most of them will be like grouped up in that area and escorting the tank. If you can get this area locked down, you can see in towards their spawn and you can even push up to these sandbags. These sandbags are going to be key in a second here. If you can end up laying in those sandbags 
and your teammates have escorted the tank the rest of the way up, which they usually will do. If not, you can always do it for yourself. It's pretty easy if you just stand behind the tank to get it up to a certain point. It's just that last little push that can be difficult, and those sandbags can help a lot with this. So once the tank gets up to about that area there, from these sandbags, if you go prone, you can actually escort it, and you can keep it contested from here. You won't be able to get it all the way to 100%. You can get it up to about about 97%, I believe, or 98. 97%. But just by laying here, I can keep that at 97% forever. Until the enemies kill me, that is. And then from this position here, you can wrap around and get up to this position. Of course, you do have to be a little bit careful. you got to be shooting people. Smoke grenades help in this area. This will take you all the way up to 99%. So this is very effective if you can get up to this position here, get to 99%. All it takes is making sure the enemies are cleared off, and then it's just that last little push to finish off the map. So there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for how I like to attack on Operation Griffin. This one definitely requires a lot more teamwork, I feel, than Operation Neptune, which I already covered. If you guys missed that, I will leave it linked down below. But with Operation Neptune, a lot of times one player can take out a whole bunker, no problem, with the right tactics and strategies. This one definitely requires a lot more teamwork, so there's only so much a solar player can do, but with these tips, hopefully it allows you to get through those sections a little bit easier. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.